If you have your Bible, come with me to Judges chapter 16, verse 28 to 30. Uh, it's something that I've been uh, reading through in the Old Testament, and suddenly God, God caught my attention uh, from the book of Judges, from the life of Samson, which is a Sunday school story in some ways. And uh, let me just quickly read. This is the end of Samson's life. Then it says, Samson prayed to the Lord, Sovereign Lord, remember me. Please, God, strengthen me just once more and let me with one blow get revenge on the Philistines for my two eyes. Then Samson reached forward to the two central pillars on which the temple stood, bracing himself against them, his right hand on one and his left hand on the other. Samson said, let me die with the Philistine. And he pushed with all his might. And down came the temple on the rulers of all the people in it. Thus he killed more than when he died than while he lived. Then his brothers and father's whole house or whole family went down to get him. They brought him back and buried him between Sora and Ishtal in the tomb of Manoah, his father. He led Israel 20 years. Amen. Yeah, <coughs> Samson... Uh, is, is, a, is a model of human strength and achievement in the Bible. And uh, as kids, we grew up in the church. Samson was like a Marvel superhero, isn't it? Today, we, uh, we have many other Marvel superheroes, but for Sunday school, if you know. And uh, with Superman's strength, he slew a, a lion with a bare hand and lifted the city gates off his hinges and repeatedly took on Dozens of Philistine in hand-to-hand -hand compact. He was a hero. Uh, countless little boys would want to emulate. He was a leader who ruled Israel for 20 years. He was born out of God's promise. He was a model of obedience. He remained a Nazarite all his life. But at the end, what happened to him is very unfortunate. <clears throat> it says he, he prayed only twice in the Bible. One when he was... Thirsty, he said, God, uh, don't, don't kill me out of, of thirst. And God opened a, a big uh, a spring that he could drink from. And this is at the end of his life. He says, God, give me strength so I could take revenge on the Philistines. For my two eyes. That was his prayer. He says, I want to take revenge on Philistine for my two eyes. It's not... I want to take revenge for the people of Israel because they have been so bad to the nation. But I want to take revenge for their, they, they took out my eyes and I want to, I want to kill all these people. And the amazing thing is that 3,000 people died that one day. He pushed, pushed the, the pillars and they came down the temple and 3,000 people are on top of it and they died. But the opposite is in the, in the New Testament, when Peter preached, 3,000 people got saved. It's just the stark difference of what the law and what the grace can accomplish. And I just got three points I want to just highlight. <clears throat> you know, first one, be a people who are value-driven, not opportunity-driven. Maybe some of you might have heard me preach this at the conference, but I want to just quickly... Share it. Paul says in, in Philippians chapter 1 verse 15, It is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. The latter do so out of love, knowing that I am put here for the, for the defense of the gospel. The former preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely. <clears throat> and Paul is saying, there are two kinds of people, people who preach the gospel for their own uh, selfish ambition. But there are people who preach the gospel out of their love for God. They love God and they want to really make the love known to others and bring people to the knowledge of this amazing God who is in heaven. So the question is that which part, which side are you? You know, are you people who are really, you know, doing things out of love or 
out of selfish ambition. And if you carefully read the story of Samson, you know, you will come to know it, so it was all about him. Never did he do anything because he loved the people of God. God used his weakness to protect his people, but as a leader, he was a very selfish man. And as I said, he only prayed two prayers, and it was all about himself. And Paul says, some preach Christ out of personal gain and selfish ambition. They preach Christ as an opportunity for personal benefit, but we preach Christ out of love for God. <clears throat> and... Uh, Opportunities dictate the presence and shapes the future. But values dictate the future and shapes the present. Opportunity person is dictated by the present and hence his future is shaped by the opportunities that comes his, comes his way. Bible says in spite of Sam, Samson's parents repeated pleas not to marry a woman from the land of the Philistine, Samson persisted on marrying the Philistine women and not just one but probably few. But the value driven person is dictated by the future hence his present is shaped by values he hold dear to, to himself. <clears throat> I was told, you know, uh, some of you know Pastor Joseph. Pastor Joseph was the, is the founder of New Life churches in Mumbai or in India, probably thousands of churches. And he met the Lord when he was very young, probably in his 20s. He was at the VT station. He didn't know English. He didn't know Hindi. He was a Tamilian. Came and God just, you know, someone shared the gospel and he gave his life to the Lord and he was poor. And this is his testimony. He says, I have served God for 55 years. And one of the things I, I decided in my life, I will borrow from no one. I will trust God for my provision. And he says, for 55 years, he says, I have not borrowed even one rupee from anybody. And I trusted God. And God enabled me to start thousands of churches because he is my provider. And I feel it's a value that he held dear. And I want to ask you, are you a man or a woman who is driven by values? You know, my father, you know, he was in the great, uh, I mean, it's not a rich man or he struggled so much in his life. And one of the things he always told us, he says, never tell lies. He says, even if someone comes to cut your throat, he says, don't tell lies. And we grew up you know, hearing from our father, he says, don't tell lies. Be a man of truth. Always speaks the truth. And I want to ask you, is there, is there values that you are building your life with? You know, about respecting elders, not giving bribes, respect and honor the women around you. And things like that. There are so many, so many things that, that, that makes a person who they are at the end of the day. And most of the values we derive from this Bible. Because it's a, the book of uh, values, book of principle, book of laws that can change your life. And book of, of the grace of God that comes to us in a unique way. <clears throat> Nigel, who was... Uh, who was um, who has done amazing breakthrough in the in the in UP and he says when he went first to UP almost 16 years back and uh, there were 35 pastors gathered and they wanted to know who we are as uh, re uh, new frontiers regions beyond and he says 35 out of 35 today only one pastor are uh, with us with us and through him that is Akshay through he through, through him we saw so many churches we have around 16 churches there and this is all the other 34 pastors they said how can you help us we want finance we have no money you know could you provide finance and could you provide this and you know this pastor doesn't have a bike because he's doing so many ministry can you buy a bike for this pastor can you build a house for that pastor and this man, Akshay, he says, I don't want finance. What I want is teaching. Can you teach me the Bible? Can you 
can you give us relationship we want to build our lives with people of of same values you know can you give us relationship can you be friends with us can you encourage us can you disciple us and today because of that one man we have been able to have so many churches and i want to ask you what is that motivates you what is that motivates you is it values or is it opportunities what motivated moses and his ministry that extended for 40 years this is what it says hebrews 11 was 25 to 27 it says he chose he chose to be mistreated along with the people of god rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin he regarded disgrace for the sake of christ as the as of greater value than the treasures of egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward <clears throat> and the next book after judges comes ruth it's a story of a woman and uh, it says they were a, a mobite woman am i yeah mobite woman and uh, and she had um her other coast sister or co- the sister in law orpha they both had a choice whether to follow naomi this old lady you know who whose husband is dead their husbands are dead you know whether to follow this woman who believes in the god of israel and the bible says ruth chose that chose to follow this old lady to israel and to the god of israel and she said your people will be my people your god will be my god where you go i go where you die i will die and i will be faithful to the god that you serve and she didn't go for opportunities or far the other woman went away from um, neomi and you know the story but ruth became the great grandmother of uh, david then you know in the line of david jesus was born is amazing yeah and i was uh, we were told at the conference is paul lost most of his leaders and churches because of his constant jail visits or jail terms you know paul had an active ministry out of the 33 years he was a christian he his active ministry lasted only 15 years and out of 15 years 5 years he was in and out of jail you know he was in and out of jail and so many people that he raised up as leaders and so many churches that he planted <laughs> many of them left that's what it says with 2 timothy chapter 1 verse 15 it says you know everyone in the province of asia has deserted me and paul is speaking from pain and he says most of the people have left me because people couldn't follow a man who is going in and out of jail and but you know what happens to fall today we still remember and we still are provoked and encouraged and taught by the letters that paul wrote and uh, he was a man who was value driven and uh, not opportunity driven and we have this booklet <clears throat> which can help us understand secondly i have 5 minutes okay value of family and local community is high priority to god's heart value of family and value of local community or church is high priority to god's heart you know bible is the story of a big family everything is written in that context ephesians 3 verse 14 it says for this reason i kneel before the father from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name the prayer that jesus taught start by saying our father in heaven hallelujah amen and uh, the beginning of israel god chose a man and his family abraham and he is called the god of abraham god of isaac and god of jacob he is not ashamed about it you know today in our nation you know the question is asked are you a parivarwadi or rashtravadi correct <laughs> are you are a parivarwadi or rashtravadi you know <laughs> you know it's not about nepotism but this is about generation to generation god is not ashamed to be part of this big family where he is our father amen samson missed it he neither believed in family or community he was one man show 
This is completely opposite of Jesus. You know, can you believe in, in Samson who ruled for 20 years, but he never had a team. He never took an army to fight the Philistine. He fought alone. That's not God. What God wants, when Jesus started his ministry, what is the first thing that he did? He went and chose 12 men. He says, come, follow me. And he made them. He equipped them and he released them. And today we have the church because of the 12 men and when made disciples and they made disciples and the discipleship goes on and on and on. Amen. You know, the church and Jesus is inseparable. You know, Jesus and the church are one. That's why Jesus said to Paul, why are you persecuting me? Why are you persecuting? And Paul said, what? Am I persecuting you? He says, when you persecute the church, you're persecuting me. Today, the persecution in India, people are not persecuting the, 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 the church members. They are persecuting Jesus Christ. And God will come through at the end of it. Jesus said, I will build my church. And I'm still in the business of building it. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Amen. And finally, <clears throat> be a vision-driven people, not just led by feelings. <laughs> you know, Samson didn't see the vision of Israel. Did not understand the vision, what God gave to the nation of Israel. Why he was chosen to lead the people of God? Why, why, why this, this, this people who are so separated unto God, people who are called to be, to be the, the holy nation, to be the chosen generation? Why? He didn't understand the perspective. And he was led by his feeling. That's why it says in, in Judges 14 verse 3, when he saw this woman, it says, get her for me. For she is right in my eyes. <laughs> you know, following verses in verse 7. Again he says, he went down to talk to the woman. And she was right in Samson's eyes. All was about himself. Whether about the episode with Delilah. You know, she continued to pursue him to share the secret. And he didn't realize. says, if I share the secret... Of my strength. You know it's not just going to reckon my. I mean it's not just going to destroy my life. But it's going to destroy the nation of Israel. He didn't see that perspective. And, and it says when, the, when he was shaved off his hair. And it says the, the Lord left him. No strength left. And, and he was made to be an object of of disgrace. I mean, they, they wanted to see him perform in the temple of their God. Samson has given both his strength and his eyes to, to people rather than to God. While being publicly humiliated in the temple of his Philistine God, Samson said, called out to the Lord and said, Oh Lord God, please remember me and please strengthen me. Only this one, so oh God. And he says, I want to take revenge for my eyes. He didn't understand that we got to be a people who are, you know, people who are driven by vision. You know, what has God called us to do? What is that God wants us to, uh, us to achieve? This is exactly opposite of Jesus, our Savior. He didn't take re uh, revenge even at the moment that, you know, the whole, everyone was crying out, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. He didn't take revenge. He looked upon them with compassion and he says, Father, forgive them. They know, they know not what they are doing. Because he saw the bigger picture. He saw us on the other side. Yes. Amen. Other side of his death and resurrection. He saw each one of us. And he says, you know, I will go through this. Because on the other side, I see multitude from every nation, from every language, from every tribe, from every people group. People worshipping the Father in heaven. That's what I have come for. And I want to say, if you're not driven by vision, you are driven by your feeling. And feelings will betray you. Because one day your feeling is up, the other day your feelings are down. 
the feelings will betray you but your vision will never betray you because vision is birthed by God and we got to be people who are driven by vision and Samson missed it because he couldn't see the bigger picture and even as Christians sometimes we can miss the bigger picture what God has called each one of us and we can get hurt this one said this that one said that he hurt me she hurt me he didn't wish me for my birthday he didn't you know he didn't say hello to me and we can miss the big picture of what God has called each one of us for and we got to be constantly as Jesus said the Bible says his eyes were like the flint he looked at that cross he looked eternity and he said this I will go through because on the other side there are people Amen. on the other side there are multitudes who will follow me amen, amen. even the persecution and the suffering that we go through we got to see on the other side there are multitudes in india who will believe in jesus amen your pain your suffering will be the seed where many will come amen it will be the seed that you will sow so that someone else can reap the blessing and the benefit of it amen and i want to ask you this question are you value driven vision driven or are you looking for opportunities what can benefit me what can benefit my family or saying god what can benefit your kingdom what can benefit your people what can benefit the church or do you have a value high value of family and the church local church and i want to say if we have that the blessing is galore amen <laughs> amen because jesus loves the church if you love what jesus love there is blessing galore amen amen i want to just end there because my time is over I want to ask you this morning are you driven by vision and values if you are not you can repent and say god give me a vision whatever it is it may be small for you or it may be big for others because vision is birthed by god and it says in proverbs 29 verse 16 i think 18 it says my people cast of restraint lack of due to lack of vision my people live carelessly because there's no vision feeling it goes to one day you're up the other day you're down and it goes on and on and on and on and before you know your hair is gray and like sunny you will lose a hair <laughs> some of us <laughs> yeah before you know the life is gone over let's make a decision say god i want to be a man who's driven by the vision that i get from following you and the values i get from this book i will not compromise like pastor joseph said i will never borrow one rupee from anyone anyone even if i had to go hungry for my children had to go hungry i will not borrow one rupee and he lived by it till he died and one day someone came and gave him a benz car okay mercedes benz which was i'm talking about many years back someone came and gifted him a benz car is this pastor i want you to drive this car i'm giving you a gift if you are a value driven if you are a vision driven benz is nothing amen, amen? god can give you much more than that let's be people who will follow this book this is the book that can change life and it's changed nations and and the, and the world amen come let's close our eyes father we just want to thank you for this morning thank you that you are a good god we just pray god that you will help us lord that we will be men and women of of the bible of this book lord 
Lord, we will be men and women, Lord, who will follow after the Spirit of God. The Spirit gave birth to vision, Lord God. Isaiah saw you and he was captivated and said, Here am I, send me. Here am I, send me. I'm available. Lord, make us, Lord, people who are driven by vision and values. And this high vision of family and the local church will not depart from us, God. Even as Bill Hybel said, Lord God, local church is the hope of the nation. And Lord, may we live by it and we may be blessed by it. In Jesus' wonderful name. Help us, Lord.